take a look at stories making the headlines in Nigerian newspapers. I have with me in the studio public affairs analyst Ola Dendi Ario and also Teofilo Selama will be joining me to do justice to the papers this morning. You're welcome. Good, Good morning. morning. I'm Good from Yanagua. <laughs> oh, okay. Obviously, you're dressed Obviously. like them this morning. <laughs> All right, we head straight to the papers now. I will begin with uh, the News Direct. Senate disowns hate speech bill. And to the front page of the Daily Times, INEC declares Bele winner of Kogi governorship poll. Wada PDP reject poll outcome, head to tribunal. Diri asks INEC to declare him winner of Bayosa Gubar elections. APC thanks Kogi Bayosa voters for backing party. And to the front page of the blueprint, November the 16th governorship polls. APC's Bele re-elected in Kogi. Lion Bayosa governor elect. My victory for true Democrats, uh, Bellu. Bayosa shall be great again, Lion. You can seek redress, Buhari tells losers, Hills, Einek, prosecute offenders, Lawan tasks, police others. Now move to the Daily Trust. It says here, Jonathan faces suspension over PDP's defeat in Bayosa. Host APC leaders to Yanagoa, Oshomole thanked, thanks ex-president. The Daily Sun says, aftermath of Gober Post loss, PDP declares war over Bayelsa Kogi elections. Diri Wada prepare for tribunal. Our victory was made easy, says Silva. Buhari regrets violence in Kogi. Congratulates Leon, a lion rather. Bilu, uh, Lawan governors, Kalu, others too. We move to the Guardian. It says, yes, Senate moves to OKE, voting for future polls. Compels transmission out, uh, transmission of results to central database slashes nomination fee charged by parties. All right, uh, we'll be looking at uh, the, gov uh, the uh, governorship election that just uh, rounded off. Okay. And we know the winners could be Bello re-elected and uh, Lyon, governor elect. But then let's look at the conduct of the election. I'm sure you monitored yeah, the election. How would you evaluate the conduct of the election? Well, the surprise for me was by South State. You know, Baeza was very, in, in previous elections, the level of routing, ballot box snatching, um, and the crisis were very close to what we have in River State. But this time around, there wasn't anything like that. But you know that a few days uh, before the election, it, you know, six persons if died. You, if you want to look at that, it's nothing compared to what we used to have. Okay, I was expecting greater mayhem in Baeza. Mm. Especially with the reading that uh, APC might likely carry the day. But it, it didn't happen. Okay, but Kogi was uh, an eyesore. Remember last week I, I told you that I don't like the idea of calling an election a battle. Yes. It's not, it shouldn't be a battle. It's not a war. And the mentality has been so ingrained in us that we prepare for elections as if we are preparing for war. Mm. The, the number of lives that were lost in Kogi was needless. So also the ballot box snatching and um, the overwhelming of the police anyway, as reported by the <laughs> Police Service Commission. Were they overwhelmed? They had about 35,000. You know, 000. that report was evil in the sense that there has been no report from the IG or the police to PSC and no post-election I mean, no post result confirming that they were overwhelmed. Mm. So PSC now came out with that. I just see that as a fallout of the election, they had to diss the police. The same way PDP now had to suspend uh, Jonathan. They're planning to. They're planning they, to. they were planning to. Okay, yeah. if, they, if they had, uh, if they were to be sincere to themselves, they would have known that with the way Dixon was conducting himself, imposing his relation, it wasn't going to work for PDP. So, okay, okay. okay. you okay. want to say? No, in, in all of this now, I'm looking at the fact that in Africa we have we've had several sit tight African rulers and it has gotten to a point in Nigeria where everybody just wants to get power at all costs. First of all, how did we get to this point where violence becomes the order of the day in elections? You see, the number one, there's this no consequence phenomenon in our in our life. Like here. Law. You can do things and get away with it if you know the right persons. Okay, you've seen kidnappers, armed robbers, and other criminals arrested, taken to court, and then they got bailed only to resume their criminality. In the same way, 
once they know that they can have their way, they continue doing the wrong thing. Number two, when you win election in Nigeria, the consequences are heavy. Mm. No matter how wretched or poor you are, you automatically becomes a wealthy man. It's a winner takes all thing. Mm. And so people want to get in there. And when they get there, they don't want to leave. Imagine this morning that I have to go through hell getting here. If I'm a governor with Sarin and everything, you have got oh, here. Come on. Me. Even the council chairman now uses a siren. I mean, those are percocides that attract people. And you know human beings. We all want the best for ourselves. And now, in Africa, it is wanting the best at all costs, including, including killing people. Hmm. Hmm. So how do we move on from here now? It's because uh, there are implications of this to our democracy, first yeah. of all. And the consequences, if we really need to entrench democracy, yeah. because some persons are saying that they are losing hope mm -hmm. in our so-called democracy. You see, it's even so bad that I mean, what we have had now is a recycling. Somebody was council chairman, became House of Assembly member, became governor, now he's senator. You know, as if there are no other reasonable human beings around, competent people, capable hands who can get in there and do something. For me, we have to make offices unattractive. How? What they get paid when they get elected or appointed is massive. Do we even know how much they get paid? Well, there are figures out there uh -huh. that we can work with if we have okay. to. That's one number two. The amount of hero worshiping that they enjoy and then the liberty they have, whereby the, the law says while they are in, in office, I mean, the governor and president, for instance, that they can't be uh, sued or taken to court or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they do all manner of things, atrocities that you cannot believe, yet they get away with it. So f for me, I still advocate public enlightenment. Mm -hmm. A lot of us don't know where we are with elections and contestants and, the, um, and policy generally. When people know where they are, the story will change. You won't hire me, me as I am now, to come and go and beat up somebody during an election. You know I will not follow you, mm. yeah. no matter the price. Mm. But there are people who are ready to lose their lives Absolutely. in fighting for their candidates. Who, when he gets elected, doesn't see them again. Mm. And they they've done here. this over and over again. In the studio, a public affairs analyst, Alade India Rio, and TVC News assignment editor, Sukwa James. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much, of course. We will uh, shift focus quite much early, much later to the bullying in uh, uh, the bullying in incident Futa. in Futa as well. But at this point, we'll look at the stories making the headlines. And of course, the news direct is saying Senate disowns hate speech a, a bill that's a, in the news direct this morning. Senate disowns hate speech, a hate speech bill. The Daily Times says, yeah, INEC declares Bello winner of Kogi governorship poll. Wada PDP rejects poll outcome, head to tribunal. Diri asks INEC to declare him winner of Bayosa Guba election. APC thanks Kogi Bayosa voters for backing party. Blueprint is saying here, November 16th governorship polls, APC's Bello re-elected in Kogi, Lion Bayosa governor-elect. My victory for true Democrats, says Bello. Bayosa shall be great again, says Lion. Uh, you can seek redress, Buhari tells losers, hail INEC, prosecute offenders, Lawan task police others. The Daily, uh, Daily Trust rather says Jonathan faces suspension over PDP's defeat in Bayos State. Uh, host APC leaders in Yenagua, Oshomale thanks ex-president. We'll go to the Daily uh, Sun this morning. It says, yeah, aftermath of Gobapo's loss, PDP declares war over Bayosa Kogi elections. Diri Wada prepare for tribunal. Our victory was made easy, says Silva. Buhari regrets violence in Kogi. Congratulates Lion Bilu. Lawan governors Kalu others too. The Guardian says yes, and it moves to OKE voting for future polls, compels transmission of results to central database, slashes nomination fee charged by parties. That's in the Guardian this morning. So let's talk about the elections in Bayosa State. It was a huge victory in Bayosa for the APC, and of course, a continuation of governance for the APC in Kogi State. And there were reports of violence in those states now. So how would you look at it? We, are, we ought to have gone beyond this uh, situation of violence in various elections, and now we are still in this situation. How can uh, we do better in the next elections? The report um, 
on the front of, of, of the sun, the, the, the caption. Yeah. Now, they said PDP said, you know, for war. Declares war over by us at the elections, yes. Now, the, I, you know, I keep saying about the type of language that we utter. And we say these things out of the abundance of what we have in our hearts. Yeah. When you say your election is a battle, is a war, what do you expect? Now, they were said to have lost the election. Instead of saying they will go to court, they said they, they are set for war. It's still the same mindset. And whether we like it or not, what we think reflects the things we do. You can see it on, 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 on the screen. Why do they have to make it a war thing? The rules, I mean, the, the, the laws guarding elections, winning and losing, they are there. Yeah. If you feel aggrieved, go to the tribunal. Okay? And then let them decide. You cannot be the contestant and the judge in your situation. And in any contest, there must be winners and there must, must be losers. losers. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to be um, very sportman, sportmanly okay. in these things. Okay, so let me move to James. Now, how will the Senate is saying that the Senate is moving to OKE voting for future polls? Mm. How will this solve election well, balance? It, it, it will go a long way you know, in solving some of the particularly the issue about um, uh, uh, snatching ballot papers yeah. and all that, you know. But I don't know if Nigeria is even um, ready. Why? You know, because take, for instance, even your phone sometimes, because we are talking e-voting, we are talking about technology. Yeah. How technologically sound and advanced is Nigeria? Okay. You know, okay. are we, can we, you know, boast? you know, say to ourselves that we are technologically advancing, you know, for us to go through, through that process of yeah. e-voting. Because even look at when the so-called card reader, you know, was brought in, so many people could not even identify, identify their, themselves. you know, exactly. their thumbprint. So it will become, it's going to be a very, you know, tough thing, you know, by, by the time we bring it into the electoral process. Yeah. And don't forget, if the Senate passes it and it comes into, a, into a, it becomes a law, INEC Most and indeed Nigeria, the federal government will make sure okay. that it happens. Okay. And if it fails, we are going back. Okay, so let's, uh, from here now, oh, sorry about uh, the <laughs> disrupting you, but we have to move to the Futa story oh, okay. at this point now. Uh, look, watching that video, personally, it's grieving for me, uh, seeing a fellow student being, being so beaten, beaten. beaten in that Mercilessly. manner. I, 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 it shows that um, morals, you know, as... The moral decadence is, yeah. is something that um, everybody needs to look into. First, we, ha we have to start from the family. Okay. You know, I, I, I was just discussing with a couple of um, colleagues, and we are talking about the things before people used to sit down as a family. Yeah. But now, the internet has taken that Over. bond. You know, so most people are always doing things on social media. Mm -hmm. Social media has taken uh, all that bond that we used to have as a brother, as a sister, that where people would pray together, where people would, you know, talk and discuss and do things together. They are all eroded and mm -hmm. they've all gone. So if now, for you to even do things like that, it shows that the kind of background that the some of those from. children are from, from, it shows a lot of things. Because coming together to beat just one particular person, mm -hmm. not even listening to her. Uh, I, I, sh I saw that video and I was like, oh God, my, what, my, what my, does the future hold for yeah. Nigeria? My takeaway is at three. Number one, the no consequence phenomenon, which I earlier spoken of. If those people knew that if they should do this, they will get caught and then they will pay dearly for it, they wouldn't have dared. Mm. Perhaps the no people, I mean, they could be children of uh, the, the rich and the mighty. Yeah, the and mighty so we can do anything and get away with it. Because what gave them that courage to embark on beating that girl until she uh, lost consciousness? Yeah. I still cannot find them. Number two, we've been talking of value system, which he calls moral. I call it value. So much that we no longer value human lives. Mm -hmm. And we no longer. I mean, all the, all the, the values they embed in our culture and tradition, mm. they've been eroded. Ditto for those taught by the faiths. Mm -hmm. So we just waste our time going to church or mosque to exactly. pray. Because the life we live do not reflect do not, those yes. things. And the third one is the fact that because she called you Ron's girls, so you thought taking her life. Because the way they were going, they were getting they were to, going that to point. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, why couldn't they just stop at abusing her back? 
or maybe if it's a one-on-one -on -one fight, nobody will call it bullying. Bullying. Mm -hmm. But see all, all of them on her, including the, the boy. I, I think the law should use them as an example of how not to behave in university environment. Uh, uh, then another thing is, will the law be, be so potent enough to prosecute exactly. such... Uh, the the law truth? has to. Because if the law is um, in between, if the law does not go the full hog, I bet you in, in this country uh, it will happen again. There will be repeated cases. Yeah, definitely, there will be repeated <laughs> yeah. I, it, This is just an isolated case. These cases have been on bullying in mm -hmm. schools, both exactly. primary schools, secondary schools. Well, this is a new dimension. It's mm -hmm. a new dimension. It was recorded, exactly. and I guess the person uh, they recorded uploaded the it and had the effrontery to upload to it, send it to the world. Yes. Uh -huh. So it, it it created a backlash. But in these situations now, what should the school do beyond suspending, suspending them, them indefinitely? Okay. Well, number one, they've been suspended. Um, whichever bodies in admission in Nigeria should make sure none of them ever gets. In, inside the university again in this country. Okay. If they want to go to let them go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But number two, if they should go to jail for these things. Because that girl would have been killed. True. The beating was too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you weigh what they said she did against the parliament they inflicted on her, I mean, they, they don't tally. They went too far. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this should serve as a deterrent to other people. Mm -hmm. But if they're allowed to go, and then nothing serious is done to them, okay. We will have repeated cases, okay. which may also end up in fatalities. Yes, okay. exactly. So most people don't know when you go to school or if you go to the university, there are two things: is academic and character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. So even if you are very good academically and, and you are bad character, and character, the yeah, university okay, have, they have uh, the power to deny you that certificate. Exactly. And so this they didn't show that character that is deserving of any child you know, or, or any student. Mm. So the, the school should go the full or the, to prosecute them. Let's even see the okay. university yes. that Doing will take up a case, it. go all out and make sure that, you know, wrongdoings are being, you know, um, t um, prosecuted or uh, being taken care of instantly, not right. just saying that, okay, we are suspending no, and then they leave. No. All right. Papers now, and I begin with the News Direct. Senate disowns hate speech bill. I will move on to the Daily Times. INEC declares Bello winner of Kogi governorship poll. WADA PDP reject poll outcome head to tribunal. Diri asks INEC to declare him winner of Bayelsa Gubar election. APC thanks Kogi Bayelsa voters for backing party. And to the front page of the blueprint, in November the 16th governorship polls, APC's Bello re-elected in Kogi, Lion Bayelsa governor elect. May, my victory, rather, for true Democrats, Bellu. Bayelsa shall be great again, Lion. You can seek redress, Buhari tells losers, Hills, Einek, prosecute offenders, Lawan tasks police others. And to the front page of the Daily Trust, uh, Jonathan faces suspension over PDP's defeat in Bayelsa, hosts APC leaders in Yanagoa. Oshomale thanks ex president. To the front page of the Daily Sun, aftermath of Guba Poe's loss, PDP declares war over Bayelsa Kogi election. Dear Uwada prepare for tribunal. A victory was made easy, says Silva. Buhari regrets the violence in Kogi, congratulates Lion, Bellu, Lawan, Governors, Kalu, others too. And finally, on the front page of the Guardian, Senate moves to OKE -E voting for future polls compels transmission of results to central database slashes nomination fees charged by parties. All right, gentlemen, let's look at the fallout so from the election so far. On the front page of the Daily Trust, it is being reported that uh, former President Gulok Jonathan might be facing suspension over <laughs> the defeat of the PDP in that state. Over 20 years, the PDP had uh, held on to power in that state, and now the APC has taken over the reins of power. And in the words of <coughs> Ashwa Jibola Tinumbu, he said, there is a political shift <laughs> in the state. Now we are seeing a fallout from that shift or shaking. I wonder what you make of this, Asoko. <laughs> well, indeed. The fallout is what you have seen. Yeah, and the fallout is falling out. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it's just, um, what really happened was just the personal issues, mm. you know, that has caused the PDP um, 
um, the, the, the states, you know, mm. because <coughs> if you look at it, just like we, you've seen that in the Daily Trust, they actually cut the They get, they cut, they said Jonathan did not the support the PDP jo candidate. Jonathan, exactly. He, he, he shunned <coughs> PDP's grand rally don't in Agua. Forget, don't forget and all of also those. that um, in the process of, you know, uh, electioneering, Jonathan's mom mm. also endorsed David Leon, you know, and, and um, in one of the, the when they actually went for the rally, the APC to. rally. Yeah. You know, he went his wife to his own. Yes. Yes. And the wife. So, so you can see that Jonathan did not just decide to say, okay, I want to sit down or uh, I don't want to support the P uh, PDP. Because he had somebody in mind, mm -hmm. but the governor had another person in mind. You know, in mind. And if he is a political leader, I think the honors falls on the party to, to respect, respect him, his, decision. his own decision. Yes. You know, and but the governor actually wanted to do his own bidding and do his own thing and run the party the way he wanted to. And, and this is the result. And this is the result. Now, Charles, <laughs> what is this saying that uh, a do can pick from? Because we see the infighting here and there, and you know your people now. <laughs> well, um, I think a do is still quite about uh, July, July next year. A yes. lot can happen. I mean, a political calendar. A lot has been happening. No, no, but let me say this. In there the has been suspensions. The political okay. calendar is not the same as the Gregorian calendar. Okay. They are different. So, <laughs> <laughs> if you are talking politics, forget about the Gregorian calendar, which is uh, January, to, January to December. Pol politics has its own calendar. And the calendar of politics, 24 hours is a long time mm. for the alignment and things to change. Okay, so we've seen it happen over and over again. What you, what you thought was going this way, all of a sudden, it changes. It so that's why it's the, the, the political calendar you can, is unpredictable. Okay, it's not about 30 days, uh, September, April, June, and November. No, 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 that's Gregorian. Okay? Absolutely. So what we're saying... But there are lessons to be learned. There are lessons mm -hmm. to be learned of the other way. What I'm saying first is that, look, even, the, even those who think they are even at daggers drawn, okay, overnight things can happen. There could be just one, one phone call, and, and then the whole thing, exactly. So that's why I'm saying that it's a long time away in the political calendar to think that uh, what happened in the visa could be replicated in those state. Oshomole and Obaseki tomorrow can, can mend fences, and then everybody will now go back to say, okay, okay, what is going to happen? School. But it's likely. But uh, if I want to go back again uh, to, to add my voice to the issue of Jonathan under threat uh, to be suspended, but I, I, think, I, think it's a, I think it's a misplaced priority over there. Mm -hmm. There is no, there's no way, there's no way in the APC, I mean, pretty big concern that, that, has, that has appointed him as the leader of the party in the state. He is a national leader. Having been in power for about six years, of, of, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So I think the role he played was like a, father, a fatherly role in, in Bayasa. Don't also, don't also forget that I, I Bayasa is the headquarter of the John Nation. Yes. And then the politics of PDP was going to be dividing the John nation. And as the John leader, it wasn't going to, going to, going to bode well. So what he did was that the man who said he, he, wanted, he wanted this man at all cost, that he was going to, it was already dividing the John nation. It's already polarized the party that was supposed to be one, that's PDP. So what do you expect him to do? He needed a leader to come over there, irrespective of our party. To, rather, to bring the John Nation uh, as one. So what, what ha is, is that bad? I, I don't know if, if that is bad. So mm -hmm. PDP should rather be talking about suspending the governor who, whose act, attitude and whose action uh, 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 brought because about the division the in the division. party. So not uh, Jonathan. That's where I see it. Mm. I okay. think Jonathan should be applauded for playing a role as a national leader. So whoever you, anybody that will bring about, about okay, look at, we were all apprehensive that the Bayesa election was going to be very Violent. volatile and violent. But it wasn't. It wasn't. So we should applaud Jonathan for even making it as peaceful as we witnessed it. I was even thinking it was even more going to be violent than uh, that of Kogi. But, but the, the, was it as was a result case. of him that uh, the, the, the election was as peaceful? No, the no, no is, but at least not, I, not to the, the level gets, we all are I think from the gets go, the choice of who the PDP actually it was a wrong choice. Was just a wrong choice mm. because there's a, a rotational a rotation ag agreement in in Bayelsa, Yes, exactly. A convention, you know, exactly. which which has kept the states and uh, the PDP years. for more than twenty years. So, for for the governor to have brought in somebody that is not particularly from the region that and was didn't supposed to bring. Exactly, they didn't, you know, exactly, they didn't fix that. You know, that, was, that, that, that was the major problem. All right, I so know so politicians they don't they don't learn lessons. They don't learn. Oh, they yeah. don't. 
It is going to happen. It will happen again and again. It will happen again and again. <laughs> All right. We hope that one day they get to learn their lessons. Well, one day. I don't know but where the world will be. But it's also good for our, our political climbs or political spaces in the country. No, no, no. It's not, it's, not, well, it's not because it's bringing about instability. Exactly. Instability, that is really? what I worry about. Yes. Is it? But now, we should have, as I said earlier in the morning, I said 20 years into unbroken uh, uh, democracy. Uh, democ I don't call it democracy. This is civil rule. Right. What we have in place <laughs> too is civil rule, not democracy. This Charles is not a democracy. Charles Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank thank you. Thank you. You're watching TVC Breakfast and we are streaming live on YouTube. You can connect with us on Twitter using the hashtag TVC Breakfast.